Running commentary. We are exploring listening to albums. It is a lost art form. We took an hour out of our day. We switched off the phones. We switched off the computers. We did not answer the door. We sat down and we listened to the artist's vision and concept. Janet Jackson's Velvet Rope. We have asked um, fellow singer songwriter and performer R.I. Harmony to join us for the review of Janet Jackson's Velvet Rope. And this was re a request from one of our YouTube viewers. So we're uh, happy to review the Velvet Rope. And uh, all right, I'm gonna give the folks some background on the Velvet Rope, which was recorded between January and July in 1997. Velvet Rope was Janet's sixth studio album, recorded in three facilities, Flight Time Studios, which is the producer of this album's facility in Adena, Minnesota, namely Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who had had tremendous success over the years with Janet Jackson. Additional recording at Hit Factory Studios in New York and Record Plant Studios um, in Los Angeles the album also credits Janet and her then-husband, Rene Elizondo Jr. as producers. Now, don't forget Janet Jackson was a megastar. A well-publicized advance of something like $27 million. Her deal together with the Rolling Stones for $28 million was said to have broken the bank of Virgin Records. Um... The cover featured Janet sporting red spirals hairwise, looking down away from the camera in a, in a black top covering her modesty. Remember before on the Janet album, uh, the only thing that was covering her modesty was her husband's hands um, in what was clearly one of the decade's most iconic album covers yes. from the 90s. Um, now, I didn't know this, but Janet's contract with Virgin was up for renewal, and Disney, Sony Music, and Time Warner were eager to get her on board. Virgin won, but they had to shell out $80 million to keep her, the largest recording contract in history at that time. We're going to go on and talk about the album very shortly. Janet Demita Jackson was born on May the 16th, 1966, which makes her a Taurus for anyone who watches the stars. She is the youngest child of the Jackson family. I believe there are nine of them. Um, born to Joe and Catherine Jackson in Gary, Indiana. Um, she had a starring role in Good Times and Different Strokes. Apparently she was also in Fame, but she wasn't feeling that one. Um, she has sold over a hundred million records and starred in many major motion pictures, including Nutty Professor 2, Poetic Justice, and one of my favorites, Why Did I Get Married? Which, I, am, I, am I on the wrong track here? I, I thought it was great. Her net worth, hold on, hold on to your seats here. Janet, if you're watching, I could use a few. Um, her net worth as of 2007 was $150 million. Ooh. But I mean, I, I mean, I think she's earned it, and and yes. I just I'm I, I'm saying all of this beforehand because this is a megastar. This is a megastar who had another member of the family that was a megastar, and who during the '90s was going through a horrific time. Yeah. As the darling of America in the 1980s, I remember when I came here in the 1990s to, and. To sing Michael Jackson at open mic, they would look at you like you were out of your damn yeah. mind. <laughs> you didn't sing Michael Jackson no. songs here in the late 1990s, but you, you did sing Janet. So let's talk the velvet rope. And we, I don't think either of us have got notes on this interlude, which starts... The album, you know, Twisted Elegance, it's an introduction to the album. I saw this subtitled title, Elsa. I'm not, and maybe that's the girlfriend that we haven't met yet. I, do you? I have no idea. We, we don't know what, we, we don't Burn collectively know what Twisted Elegance was about. But very quickly, Velvet Rope featuring Vanessa May comes in. And why don't you lead us in with that? Um, the only thing that I can really... 
Mm, well, okay, as far as Twisted Elegance go, I can probably say with this album overall, it was intimately stimulating. Um, as far as this first song, it started off very edgy, very rockish, but you know, of course she's a pop singer and, um, she twisted the expected. So that's what I'm kind of thinking where that intro came, uh, Twisted Elegance came from because we've known her as the sweet Janet, you know, she's a hardcore dancer and that's her, but, and I really think that's where it came from. As far as the, uh, Velvet Rope is this was really soft and edgy and I, I really love how she mixed in the violins with this. Vanessa May was the uh, British violinist on this track and at 19 years of age, just so you know, when this album was released. Velvet Rope is memorable for a lot of reasons and one of the main reasons is that there is a sample of Tubular Bells mm. by Mike Oldfield, which for any of you who are movie lovers, was also the theme to The Exorcist. So, da, 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 you know, that thing when they, you know, they, they comes flying out of the window and the girl's head turns around and it's, yeah. <laughs> so what you get to feel here, or what the message I get from The Velvet Rope, which uh, the album concept here, just so that our viewers are aware, is that The Velvet Rope is something that you're on either side of. And in many cases, a lot of us are on the wrong side of the velvet rope. A lot of people are in the club, in that VIP lounge, enjoying cocktails and usually carrying on in behavior, which ends up so that they're back on the other side of the velvet rope, I might add. But a lot of us feel trapped emotionally or shut out emotionally or not able to express ourselves. And what the Velvet Rope album dealt with, and, and this was just mind boggling to me, mm were body image issues. Issues of feeling not good enough. And you think of Janet Jackson and you think, how, how could you not see how beautiful you are? How would you not see how talented you are? But that's what the Velvet Rope was about. And it was a very, very brave move. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, as younger people, I think, as younger people, you're very unforgiving. It's like, oh, it's her, what's she going through? You know, that, that'll that be what it is. It's like, what you, I, I haven't got time to like deal with your problems. You're supposed to be a pop star. You're bright and upbeat. That's what you do. I mean, not for nothing. Right. It wasn't, but five minutes ago, you were doing whoops now, which was you and your girlfriends having a great time. Now here we are with this sort of more difficult and edgy material. This, and I, I think that's what the very role came, you know, about to be. She shifted the mental psyche. That's exactly what she did with this album that I feel. Um, like you said, we're used to her, we was used to her being a certain way, but and she really threw out a lot of personal issues here. Like in, even in your own life, she just, she named a lot of things that was going on in the world. I mean, she covered what relationships, bondage, homosexuality. I mean, she, she, she really threw a lot of things out, not including hot steamy, you know, that's Janet. <laughs> but that's where this went. And it's funny, isn't it? Because, you know, we go on to track three, which is you. Um, mm -hmm. It's that rockier sound. Immediately I hear it, I think of Black Cat. I think of that rockier <laughs> kind of like, you know, it's her strutting across the stage. I get it that it's a different song. Can't blame nobody but you. Good, good message. It usually is you that's the problem. Mm -hmm. If you're having a lot of problems, look inwards. Look. No, don't look outwards. Um, conscious is spelt backwards as one of the hooks here. I don't know if you picked up on oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah, that's for those letters that she's spelling. It was driving me nuts. Oh, I, I had to check oh, out. Man, I, I had to check out the lyrics. Oh, well, yeah, not only that, you know, you can't blame no one but you, but say what you mean and mean what you say. And that was another thing she uh, portrayed across in this. This, for me, this was that unexpected low draggy voice that she did. I mean... You're so used to her being that bubbly, that yeah, light, yeah, 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 that light voice pop singer, but she brought it, brought it to you like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but you know, she did pick it up and push, and she, she went with that pushy, sharp voice that we all know, you know, from Michael Jackson to use uh, with him singing. So, yeah, this is, this is, this is where that lies with me. <laughs> Track four is is the, this huge single. It's Got Till It's Gone featuring Joni Mitchell and Q-Tip. 
Um, I've got here that it was a big hit for Janet. I, I've got to say, what I remember about here, I remember thinking, don't it always seem to go, you don't know what you've got till it's gone, and that's Joni Mitchell, and I've since discovered a whole group of, of black musicians and artists who swear by and pitch their life on Joni Mitchell's work. I, I'm not that familiar with it, um, but they love her. Clearly, as we see on this album, for the first time, Janet's bringing her musical influences on board here as well. Um, you know, so Q-Tips, now why you want to go and do that, huh? Now why you want to go and do that? Do that. Hey. It's so <laughs> iconic as a hip-hop line in American culture. And it, to me, is actually one of the most memorable things of this track. You know, Janet's yeah. laugh at Q-Tips, do you feel that? Yeah. And, you know, Q-Tip ends with dust. And it's like, it's, you know... He was left off of the D'Angelo album, bless him, but he was certainly present on this big selling record for, for Janet. Yes, yes, yes. I was definitely... And th and one thing about it, this was when Kuta was in his prime, because of course, as you know, he was with uh, um, a Tribe Called Quest. Quest. Right. And then he went, two years later, he went solo, you know, in 1999. So I felt like this was a great transition for him to be on this Janet album, especially this track, because it went so big. It's a, to me, and you're going to hear me say this a couple of times, this is such a groove song for a road trip. I love this song. I can go on a road trip with this song anytime. Good. We've got, um, now we're going to talk about this. Now, Ariel, if, 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 if Jos <laughs> Josie Knott is watching, you have full permission to fast forward through this section. And if you do not do that, Josie Knott, then you have only yourself to blame. Hi, Mom. Okay. <laughs> The next interlude is called Speakerphone, Speakerphone, and we get a taste of some of the more controversial elements of what this album became to be well known for. Yes. And Janet has, I get Lonely, I believe, playing in the background That's here. That's how she introduced it. Yep, she introduced that. Lonely. And she's having a, having a chat with a fellow female, and it becomes very apparent in a short space of time that this is not a family friend. This is somebody that is uh, headed for the sack with Janet, which is a shocker. I've got to tell you, this was part of it. You know, that black sweater it instantly now screams lesbian. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but, but that's what I'm thinking and not for nothing. Janet says, or is her, who says that your coochie gone swell up and fall yeah, apart? That was her friend on the phone who said that because of course you can hear her, uh, you can hear Janet pleasuring herself and that's what her friend made that statement. I do love how she really did introduce I Get So Lonely because we're going to get into that later. But um, it's just, yeah, that that was, it set her off though. That set her off. And this album made her a gay icon, you know, so that. Well, yeah. I mean, my my feeling on that is actually that this this record needed to happen because I didn't feel that she had up until that point recognized this gay club presence that she mm -hmm. had, the remixes with Morales. You know, the, the, this was a, somebody in the clubs that, that, trust me, those queens were getting up there and dancing to Janet remixes <laughs> from the minute she was off the shelf. And I don't think up until this point on this album had she actually said, you know what? Is it the Jehovah's Witness thing? These, these people were raised as strict yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. And this was at a time when it was okay to do that. You had the Osmonds on one side being strict Mormons. And on the other side, you had the Jacksons who... This was a strict Jehovah's Witness background. Which I think... I, you know, for, forgive me, Auntie Pat and Auntie Elsie. Is why these people sort of came out so fucked up. Because... That there's, you can't do anything. You can't celebrate your birthday. You can't celebrate your holiday. You can't have a blood transfusion. Right. You can't right. do this. You can't even talk to someone if they happen to be of a different persuasion. So I think it did take a lot of bravery for her to say, there's no way around this. These people are the reason that I'm getting offered $80 million 
by Virgin Records at the end of the day. And so this is why this homosexuality seeps in here and cements, I wouldn't say starts it, but cements this relationship with the gay audience. Because let's face it, Madonna was doing it a long time before. And I had a roommate that used to say, that between Madonna and Janet Jackson, they used to wear each other's asses out because they were constantly competing for those yeah. top spots in the pop charts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I, I don't know. But I, I do like, as far as this album goes, and speakerphone, this was her introduction to her raw sexiness. So that's one thing I really kind of just took from that. That's pretty much all I have from that. With my need, um, it sounds like I it said, uh, you know, you're so clever. It sounds like you're all I need to get by. It's because it samples. And that's where it. that's yep, that's where <laughs> it, it samples from. And it also <laughs> samples Love Hangover. We know that Michael Jackson loves Diana Ross. Yes. <laughs> so we know that you know, and that you can't. Don't you feel like at times on this album, he's like there holding her hand, like at times. Oh, of course. You of know, course. Um, they were so close though, yeah, and, and they really f fed off each other, especially when they got older, you know. But yeah, definitely. So the interlude. Did you have any more to say about my need? Nope, another great road trip. Oh, yeah, <laughs> group. It's very cute and very sensual. That's that's pretty much all I got from this. So it's not so much I have to say about that one. Um, interlude. Fasten your seat belts. This, you know, I mean, these interludes are really short and. Yeah. I mean, I remember texting you, you know, before we, you know, we didn't discuss the album, but I remember. <laughs> this is a long ass Janet Jackson. Oh I mean, I've, not, I've never been exposed to so much Janet Jackson, think, literally or figuratively, maybe on the last album, but this was a long album. Um, and yeah, then this, we, oh, go, go ahead, ahead. no, after you. This is going to be like, this is, this interlude I really did like though, because you really get that, that, that that real feel of Janet in this album with all of these interludes. And I'm guessing that's how come she made them so prominent on this album because she really wanted you to get a feel of her. And you know, with this one, this is just her friends having fun. They're messing around. And I, I love it. I love the reason that she put those in there. Next up is Go Deep. Why, why don't you lead us in with Go Deep? This is sort of a funky track. Um, you can hear, and, and this is one thing I really love about this, you can hear, and I don't know if you picked this up, the Atomic Dog. Did you pick that up? I didn't, <laughs> but talk to me about the Atomic Dog. Oh, uh, we... well, of course, it's about the Funkadelic, yeah, about the... <laughs> 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 the Funkadelics being mentioned to this, I really enjoy that. I love that she really kept that pop sound. Um, you would think... Coming from Janet, it would be such a sexual song because it's go deep, but it's, it's really not. It's just talking about, no. yeah, it's really just talking about how uh, their friends go out and they, they go in deep. You know, it's a slight freakiness to it, but this it's well, not. But there is, but I think actually it's that dance thing. And if I think, again, we go back to these club kids that the minute she plays these remixes, you know the track I always think of prior to this is You Want This. This, with that, do you remember the video in the desert with all the, if you. Oh, yes. Trust me, that in the clubs would bring the people to the dance floor. This is a really great dance track. She knows she's a dance icon. She yes. knows she's a gay icon. She knows she's a pop icon. She knows she's an African-American icon. She embraced it, boy. Yes, she did. It's a really great dance track, as I've said, and it's a yeah. It's really catchy. I love yeah. it. Number three on the UK R and B charts. I think I may have been thrown out of a club or two to this track. I, I, <laughs> I seem to remember me and my um, me and my walking stick being unceremoniously dumped onto the Tottenham Court Road sidewalk to this one. So I can see it. It was like, oh my goodness, this track again. Yeah. So. Let's let's move forward with Ooh. again. It's another controversial track, really, with Three Zone, which has the Tighten Up sample. Think about it. I love that, da -da, like that, that, da -da, that metallic thing. It has oh. a da -da, uh, Think about it by Lynn Collins and Joyous by Pleasure are the samples on here. Talk to us about you know these different kinds of loving that she's talking about. Yeah, she's definitely uh, putting out homosexuality on this track. She's expressing equality. So, you know, Janet, like you said, between her and, Ma and Madonna, 
that was really back and forth with this. Um, uh, no, you know, not holding back who you are. I love the edginess that she had in this as well. Um, this was mostly a jam instrumental to me. This is this wasn't really a a, a vocal kind of song. Um, it's, well, I mean, only in the, for my money, and, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong here, she says, you know, boy meets boy, boy loses boy, boy gets cute boy back. Right. Girl meets girl, girl loses girl, girl gets cute girl back. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the same for the heterosexual, which right. is zone two. And then zone three, which is the brotherly, fraternal, family, respect for another human being love. So there's the three zones. Three being a play on words of free as in one, two, three, but also mm -hmm. three, and then zone spelt with the X, because I right. guess it's taboo. Um, wow. I thought there was some inventiveness here. It was, it was. And this was definitely like a, a Prince jam to me. I kind of felt Prince a little bit in this. And uh, and did you, I think you already said it was sampled by Archie Bell. Did you say Oh, that? yeah, Tighten Up. Yep, Tighten Up, yes. Did so it, did what, it. In the drills. Did it, did, did, did it, it. Yeah, yeah, love it. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> Um, particularly with a few sliders, it's it's wonderful. Um, we have interlude memory, which leads into this massive single from the album Together Again. I, I really like this interlude, though. Be, um, you don't have to hold on to the pain to hold on to the memory, and a lot of people do that. Honestly, it probably subconsciously. So she, she really went over a lot of things here through through ups and downs, and this was this was kind of a downer. And I can probably relate to this interlude as well. So even though it's very short, it 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 holds a lot. It carries a lot. And uh, you said together again, which leads into that. This starts off as a ballad. Uh, it went to a smooth dancing sound. It's fun and bubbly. Uh, it reminds me of Whitney. Every you know, I'm every woman. <laughs> I don't know if you picked that up. Hmm. This was highly disco inspired. Um, this clue included Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam, uh, which of course, like Marshall said, they were legendary producer, producers. And this was also to, uh, um, she, she paid homage to a friend that she lost. I believe his name is Jose. Uh, he died with AIDS. And so she didn't want to do anything that was, you know, down. She wanted to do something that was fun. About well, upbeat. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, indeed. She did lose someone to HIV, which... I have to say, again, the timing of this, and I, and I do think that it took a lot of courage for her to say, look, Madonna's done it. I've got all these people. I know mm -hmm. they're there. I know my family are not going to approve. I know it makes it difficult for Michael. I know, you know, I mean... I, she did it. She did it. She did it. I'm glad she did it. And I think it was an important turning point for her, particularly with the African-American gay community here. Because up until then, who was really out there as a big star, kind of? Um, Donna, Donna Summers. That's where this came from, really, again. Last day. Well, except that the problem, the problem with Donna is that the Donna said that, you know, that the AIDS was a gay disease and it was a punishment from God. And Don, Donna Summer lost a lot of people. Because she was a, a huge, a huge gay icon she that had, right. you know... It, you know, rest in peace, Donna. We love Donna Summer's music. And, you know, she, to this day, said that's not what she said, that it was taken out of context by a couple of queens mm. at a concert in Hamburg. Who knows? I mean, this, this is the days before social media. But Janet here, I think, was... There was a reflectiveness here. It was very zen, wasn't it? It had that, like, little flute. Mm -hmm. And then everyone in the video looks so colourful and happy to be together yeah. in this sort of what looks like a mountaintop temple of love. Lovely sort of vibrant kind of neo-soul colours. She was going for this neo-soul style here. And this made her Grammy in 98. And it was a massive hit, yeah. wasn't it? It was mm -hmm. a very, very big song. And... And the fact that she wanted to be together again with somebody that had lost their life to to uh, the uh, health crisis yeah. of the late 80s and yeah. 90s where so many people lost. Now, I don't know if you know this, but do you know that this song definitely had two different versions? No, I didn't. What, what, yep. Which one are you referring one, to? One, it, it definitely started off as the one we all probably know is when it the starts single. off the slower, the slower one. And she also had one that it was more upbeat. It was more of tempo. It started off fast. Oh. But everyone appeared to the slower one, which was to their surprise. And when she first debuted it, they told her, go with the slower one. And when she hit the first note, they said that the crowd went wild. 
So that's where we all know that one. We all yeah. know that version. Mm -hmm. Interlude online. I, I don't have any notes here. I, I figured you might do. The only reason I have notes for this <laughs> is because if you were with AOL, you know the struggle of this sound. You're <laughs> like, that dial up back in the day. <laughs> Let me tell you. Ooh, that's what we've that come up, we've come a long way, baby. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that AOL online dial-up was the worst, and I'm so glad that she made this a memorable mark in this. <laughs> this yeah, I mean, yeah, because here we are. I mean, I'm thinking very forward-thinking, but you know, meanwhile the circle's oh going around, which is my gosh. favorite when the circle oh, keeps yeah, going right. round and nothing happens, mm, and I'm mm, mm. going to throw the computer across the room. Um, MT, which is the opposite of online. <laughs> I, I don't I don't have I don't have notes for empty I, I I enjoyed it um, I know that I had other things that I loved so much more I, I didn't know if you what did you have to say I about think this MT? was so the opposite because with the online interlude it made you so upset but with empty this was very tranquil it was a calm song <laughs> I think that she, I think she had to do that on purpose because you would have got mad all over again listening to the the online track. Um, even when the well, particularly in a computer age, it's like it's more annoying as time goes on. <laughs> this is very staccato, so it's it's not much to it. But um, I do love the the digital drum she gave in this. So that's that's pretty much all I have. For so that she time. follows empty with full, which is another interlude. Yes. And I really like this interlude too. How empty of me to be so full of you. And I can I can so relate to that. Like I said, it's very short, but it, it carries so much. It, it holds a lot. So, um, I mean, it's, it's self-explanatory because you can feel, you know, so empty inside and lose yourself a little bit because you want to hold, you want to hold on to so much of this other person that you're so involved with. And we definitely get a sense going into the next track, her reasoning for following empty with the interlude for mm -hmm. going into what about. And I, I've got to say, the first thing I notice here is it, it reminds me of the chorus in Scream with Michael. It re <laughs> it's, it's, I, I couldn't put my finger on it that's that's what it reminds me of um michael and janet to me have a familial sound when it comes to anger mm -hmm. everyone remembers scream not so much for the song but we all remember them playing ping pong on that in those space age suits with the yeah, black and white and what was the everybody was waiting to see that video when it came out and and what about is dealing with domestic violence you know, what about when you said it didn't mean anything when she gave you head? You know, this was a line sort of from like Jagged Little Pill. And I listen, I loved it a bit. And it mattered that she said it, but it was kind of like my feeling is. And also, you know, the other thing that killed me here was was the Brandy thing. Because I'd always liked What About by Brandy. Yeah. And now here it is like. What about with Janet? I, so that was that was a weird kind of thing for me. No like, shade. What about Brandy? But what about Janet? <laughs> what? Oh um, yes, viewers. Thank you. I know that Brandy was three or four years later. I know that you're all looking on your little calendars <laughs> to remind me that I've got my dates wrong. Thank you. Yes, I know Ooh. that Brandy was after Janet Jackson. I know this, but I. It, to me, What About by Brandy was like the one I knew and then I heard What About by Janet, which was about getting the shit kicked out of you um, or being abused by a, a spouse. I don't know, it kind of fell down for me. I, I didn't really... I honestly thought this was a bounce back song because like I said, she'd been through it, but she bounced back. And that's one thing I really liked about this song. Um, it was It was... It started off sort of calm and deep, and then next thing you know, like you said, it reminds you of screaming, back in your face, like I bounced back to this. And I don't, do you know who produced this or who helped her with this song or? No, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I'm imagining it's under the, well, the only producers we've got listed are Jam and Lewis. Who... Right, and it's so weird because I, fe I really feel like if this, if she did not do this song, which of course I know this was years ago before this artist came out, but I definitely think this song could have belonged to Pink. Or misunderstood. Well, there album. we are. I mean, but it's interesting that we both think of this song belonging to somebody else because yeah. I can't imagine, I mean, really someone's going to hit Janet Jackson? Well, would you hit her? I wouldn't hit her. Would you hit her? You couldn't After seeing her in Why Did I Get Married, I would never hit her. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and she had enough of that then. <laughs> yes, she did. But then again, who would have hit Holly Berry? But it happened. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's move right. on to every time. Every time. time. Go ahead. Well, you know, I felt like this was far more familiar Janet territory here. This was what make, it makes me think of again. It seems out of a place among this far more soul-searching work. But the fans are not going to be mad at something which is textbook Janet. And here's the other thing. Disney was sniffing around. Mm. Now, if Disney was sniffing around and I'm making a song as Janet Jackson and I know who Disney think I am, I'm not going to be making What About. I'm going to be making every time. I can understand that. Yeah. Uh, this I, th this song, I loved the piano chords. They were phenomenal phenomenal to me. Very sweet. Uh, it, it was it was very sentimental. I don't know if you got this, but this definitely reminded me of Dreaming of You by Selena. Mm. Very much. And I was like, I wonder did that have anything, any influence with this song? Um, so I can't, like I said, I can highly relate to this. Um, when you you love you want to love but you're afraid and when things seem like they're they're too right because you kind of know it never lasts like that it can get confusing and you know you can have you're waiting a guard for the other shoe to drop wanna, yeah you don't want to let your guard down so yeah it can get pretty cloudy up there in the head so. but you've got to admit that this is the lightest point on this album yeah. up until this point well, i mean the first half the, it's it's like a half and half the last half of her album was was mostly ballad and the other thing is the video. We should mention these sort of green contact lenses, the straightened hair. She's mm. in the in the water, isn't there? I think there was some sort of uh, controversy about her being naked in this video. Possibly, it was a single. It was released, so it had a promotional kind of video. I don't know how any kind of controversy can come after Madonna. I think she was probably. <laughs> What do you have to talk about now? Well, you know, <laughs> one rule for one, another rule for another. I mean, you know, Madonna ditched the um, the topless uh, catwalks for the white picket fence very shortly. <laughs> as as our audience can attest, they were there. Um, let's go on with Tonight's the Night, which is also a single. And it's a cover of Rod Stewart's top 10 hit from 1977, oh, wow. which features his then girlfriend, Britt Eklund, who was also featured on the track. Uh, Rod is, in his usual humor when he performed this song, would say that I just want to let you know I'm about to perform a Janet Jackson original. Oh! <laughs> um, this song's definitely a nighttime groove to me. I've, I've caught different feels with this album, so I'm definitely letting you know like how I felt with um, this track. She definitely this, caught different feels. I, yeah. <laughs> this is a very sensual song. You know what? This is, <laughs> this is a very sensual song. Uh, we know that Janet could get pretty gritty, you know, as far as the sexy area goes, but this was more described in the essence of the night, uh, you know, building up to it, not necessarily describing the main thing. Um, but she wanted to be disconnected from the outside world, from the phone, from everything, and she just wanted to be with the guy. This this song was a silhouette of a night, and I really, this is where I really like Well, it. yes and no. I mean, what I would say here is that if you knew the Rod Stewart version, you'd know that the young lady that she's with is wearing a French maid outfit or whatever she is. She's getting taken upstairs, and she's going to have, let's spread your wings and fly away. Um, I, it, no. <laughs> <laughs> this song was kind of cool because it was totally unexpected. Um, the same sex theme is pursued. She's not letting this go. She's going to let you know on the velvet rope, you know that $80 million that I just got? I didn't yes. get that in this one. I, yeah. It was a conversation, she, it's though, between... It's a woman. What? I it's thought a it was woman. A guy. With this song, I thought it, I thought it was a guy. She's okay. wearing a French maid outfit. The girl's wearing, you know, sexy French maid outfit. Hmm, I missed that. Okay. That's okay. Um... <laughs> I, listen, shall I not even speak during I Get Lonely? Yes! My... <laughs> My song. You're about to have a Janet Jackson mishap with the breast there. <laughs> Let's not do that. This was my favorite song. Like, I can say, I had this song on repeat. Um, this... <laughs> <laughs> I really think this was meant to be this I, this was meant to be the single of the album I I, I to me um I, I honestly think if she would have just put the word velvet rope in this song then this would have been the song of the album um 
I think that's pretty much, this is so sexy and passionate. Um, the epitome of her official R&B side. That's what this song lies to me. Right. Yes. And the single was re was a remix with Black Street. You know, Janet's certainly on stage with Black Street as she uh, cavorts around here, but she's looking very lovely in the back of that limousine, isn't she? With with a <laughs> my goodness. Oh my goodness. There, there's yes, no the need videos. to be lonely, Janet. I mean, I think really that no one can ever believe that you're lonely. Like no one can believe that you're getting beaten up, and no one can believe this. It's hard to believe that this stuff is happening. Is Janet? Could, how can Janet Jackson be lonely? You, I but, can't see that though. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's like Abba said. You know, um, how can how can you be so lonely with like twenty thousand of your friends in stage on front of you? But you know, they're not the loved one of your heart. But I I will say this. I want to say this. Mm -hmm. But I think it's fair to say that this song did Janet the power of good with her R and B audience, um, and that I think the songwriting, particularly on the harmonies, <laughs> like that, it was that build up. Yes. It was that crescendo on the Love chorus. It which gave Janet here one of the most unique sounding hits and yes. shame on me for not knowing this was on the Velvet Rope. I, did, how did, I just did not see how you did not know that this song was on the Velvet Rope. Oh my gosh. And close. So, uh, <laughs> rope, rope Burn, track 19, is oh. the... Uh, yes. Just in case you didn't have enough of the um, springy sound from Go Deep, here it is again on, on, on Rope Burn. Um... <laughs> This was a great follow up to me um, after after Lonely. Um, my eyes were wide when the first sentence said, my lips hurt. <laughs> what? <laughs> and my next question is what? <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> Get yourself some chapstick or Vagisil. I mean, help a brother out. I mean, which ones? Like, you, you've been talking about getting busy with these girls all throughout the album, you know. Oh. Not once have I heard safe sex mentioned, by the way. <laughs> this is true. Who are these hoochie mamas that you're rubbing up against? Oh my God, this, this song put me so much in the mind of Maxwell, though. Yeah. You know, with cops come knocking, so... <laughs> my lips <laughs> Can you imagine saying to like a female diner, which ones? No, right? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. This, but, um, this is also, you know, this is also- I'm having a, too much fun with this. <laughs> this is also a, um, a, a sexy song that I really think piqued the, the S&M side of her. Um, Cause you know, she got into the blindfolding and being tied up and then she was like, I, you know, then she was like, I want to feel a rope burn. And I'm like, what? Just so, just if any of our audience would like to leave their email address if they're into this kind of thing, I'm <laughs> right here, boo boo. Um, <laughs> um, next up, we have anything which is breathy and chilled out. That's that's all I've got for you on anything. You know, at this point, I'm like, I'm just waiting. <laughs> It's like that moment in Absolutely Fabulous, Pats, I'm 72. It's like, please let this album be over. But anything, come, you're still going. You've still got life. Your lips don't hurt. Stop. <laughs> um, I, feel, um, I feel like it's so lonely was, a good, was the start up of this. <laughs> You know, sorry, okay. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Rope Burn was an action, action packed song, and I feel like anything was the calm down uh, before round two. And <laughs> so that's where anything was to me. You, um, I mean, at round two, I feel like I've gone through like 20 rounds at this point. We've got a free know, zone, we've gone deep, we've done, got till it's gone. There's a velvet rope at the beginning. <laughs> And at this point, it's like if she got with someone who was really about that life, I saw him saying, you have exceeded my expectations and you got me now. Like, I, you have me to you. And that's why I feel like this song was com coming from. I would do anything, you know, for you. Um, this is kind of like laying in bed, kissing, touching, you know, slight foreplay. So that's why I kind of like this. This 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 is where this song uh, lined up with me. Another... I mean, she went in a great direction as far as this album go. Interlude, sad. 
Oh boy. There's nothing more depressing than having everything and still feeling sad. We must learn how to water our spiritual garden. Another interlude, man, it's short, but carries a lot. Yeah, I mean, talking of watering your spiritual garden, especially when your lips hurt. Um, <laughs> Let's not forget this. <laughs> that while your, your spiritual garden is dry, your lips hurt. No, I... <laughs> All kidding aside, it is important to water your spiritual garden Very of much. nourishment and education, and we are grateful for those blessings. Yes. And the blessing for me comes on track 22. My favorite song on the album is Special. Yeah. I've been waiting the whole album for a song like this from Janet Jackson to come on. I haven't bought it yet because... The funds on my Bank of America card are running pretty low right now. But you can bet your bottom dollar that when I do have enough, I'm going right home and, then, and I'm going to buy Special, which could have been sung by Michael. It could have been. It could have been. Yeah, I absolutely love it. It's, it. I can hear Michael singing it. You have the kitty chorus. She's like, don't get it twisted. I had a moment back there. But I also know that I'm a household name and Definitely. I'm not going to let you down on that thing. So if anyone with the parental advisory controls can play the song special and more importantly, the hidden track yes. mm -hmm. can't be stopped. Obviously, we've said about these issues of self-esteem, body images, domestic violence can't be stopped, I think, is an important way to end the album. The message of the song here is what impresses me. I'm not crazy about the song, but I like that it's that last minute happy uh, ending. And I feel the exact same way. I was, I feel the exact same way. I'm not crazy about it, but I do love the, the message of it and how she ended. Um, this song was definitely a um, special, was to care about yourself, pretty much. Like you, like you said, self-esteem issues. And when it got into that hidden track, it's like, you know, she's letting you know, don't let anyone tell you you're not strong enough. You're kings and you're queens. And that's where she left off the album. So we, I mean, we gave this a really thorough going over with the Velvet Rope. I mean, lot. honestly, <laughs> I, I am so happy to have experienced the Velvet Rope with you, R.I. Harmony. Thank you. And, Same um, here with you. you know, check her out at the YouTube site, which is... Yes, youtube.com slash Arai Harmony. I have vlogs, I travel, my live performances, my music, music videos. So, yeah, please feel free to check that out and subscribe. I would love if you subscribe to it. We, we've got one more order of business here on Running Commentary Album Reviews. The Velvet Ready? Rope, Janet Jackson, which is the rating. <clears throat> and I'm going to go first. Um, I... This was a lot of Janet Jackson. I, you know, thank you for asking us for this in-depth review, and I hope that you enjoyed it. We certainly did. Yes, we did. Um, this has been great. Um, my final mark for a Janet Jackson Velvet Rope is 84%. I just have to throw in there, because some things I don't really agree with with this album, but it was still a great album, and the direction was really good, I would say 75. So 84, 75. 159 Janet Jackson Velvet Rope final mark for a running commentary album reviews first 79.5 percent I don't know how our clock's gonna handle that